हेलो आई वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू गुड मॉर्निंग विनोद गुड मॉर्निंग कवि गुड मॉर्निंग संध्या कृतिका एंड काव्या सो शेल वी स्टार्ट द टूडे सेशन गुड मॉर्निंग आदित्य गुड मॉर्निंग नीतू गुड मॉर्निंग सुकन्या Good morning happy Shall we start the today's session Good morning Rakesh good morning Surya Good morning Pallavi Anjali Bharat Meenaka Santosh Kavya So today we are going to see current affairs of 3rd September 2023 and today is Sunday a very happy Sunday for all of you So the first topic it is about Aditya L1 Aditya L1 lifts off to study the sun So here you have to see solar mission And you have to see here some examples of the solar missions So from India side we have this Aditya L1 And here you have to see what is lag ridge point So already we have enough discussion regarding this Aditya L1. So once if you are getting the findings of this Aditya L1, so there we are going to discuss this topic. So what is this Aditya L1 program? It is about. Good morning, Naga, Hari, Mohan, Sanskriti. Yes, what is this Aditya L1? It is about. Yes, study of sun. Yes, solar mission of India. So, what are the key findings? So, what might be the findings of this Aditya L1? So, what we are going to study? Okay, Nithu. So, what we are going to study? Study the sun chromosphere. Okay, surface of sun. Corona. Study sun flares. Very good. Yes. So, yesterday this. mission has been launched successfully by isro so let us see some important facts regarding this article so this topic is important from which subject point of view it is important from science and technology which comes under your gs paper 3 and here there is a high chance of getting question in your prelims and even in your mains regarding this topic So you can expect even question regarding this Aditya L1 in your public service examination, that is state public service examination also. The very good Kavya and Raja. So here context says that it is India's first solar observatory mission and was launched successfully by ISRO. ISRO is nothing but Indian Space Research Organisation. So if you are preparing for other competitive examinations, even abbreviations you can get. So you have to be very clear with abbreviation. So ISRO is Indian Space Research Organisation. A good morning, Raja. Good morning, Balaji. So if you see some details regarding this article, it said that so this launch done by using Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, that is PSLV, and it is a 59th flight. It is very important. It is 59th flight. And yesterday I asked one question regarding why why PSLV is called as war, work horse of ISRO. <clears throat> okay, Muttu. Yes, tell me why PSLV is called as work horse of ISRO. So this is a question I gave yesterday as homework. So till now I didn't get any answer from anyone. So let me know why PSLV is called as work horse. Yes, good morning, Khan. Yes, very good, Krithika. Because of successful launch of many satellites. Yes, very good, Kavi. So, do you know about different variants of launch vehicles, different types of launch vehicles in India? A hey, good morning, Sudhakar. Do you know about different types of satellite launch vehicles? 
गुड मॉर्निंग जयना यस वन मिनट सो वी हैव फोर स्टेजेस फर्स्ट वन इज सैटेलाइट लॉन्च वेहीकल नेक्स्ट वन इज ऑगमेंटेड सैटेलाइट लॉन्च वेहीकल एंड थर्ड जनरेशन वी हैव दिस पी एस एल वी पोलार सैटेलाइट लॉन्च वेहीकल एंड वी हैव जी एस एल वी सो दिस इज द फोर्थ स्टेज ओके सो दीज आर द फोर डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ लॉन्च वेहीकल्स और प्रेजेंट इन इंडिया एंड वी केम विद द डिफरेंट स्टेजेस ऑफ डेवलपमेंट So in this PSLV also we have three variants. So now we used Excel variant of this PSLV to launch this Aditya L1 mission. Is it clear? Anyone? Any doubts? Are you following? Yes. Now let us see some facts regarding this PSLV. So PSLV is nothing but Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle. So what is PSLV? That is Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, and it is third generation launch vehicle of India. So first generation we have satellite launch vehicle, and second generation we have augmented satellite launch vehicle, and third generation we have this PSLV, and fourth generation we have this GSLV. So this is the third generation of launch vehicles in India. Is it clear? Good morning, Shilpa. Good morning, Meenakshi. Good morning, Pavan. Good morning, Raja. Good morning, Akshya. Good morning. Okay. So these are the four types of launch vehicles. And is the first Indian launch vehicle to be equipped with liquid stages. So earlier we had solid stages, and now we have this liquid stages. and we have four stages in this pslv so we will be having solid liquid solid liquid here right in gslv we have three stages one will be solid second one is liquid and third one is cryogenic so this is a major difference between this pslv and gslv is it clear And next one here is PSLV earned its title that is workhorse of ISRO because of consistently delivering various satellites into low Earth orbits. So into low Earth orbits, yes, this PSLV is utilized by ISRO to launch different satellites. And if you see how many types of orbits are there, so I'm saying it is low Earth orbit. So apart from this, so how many types of orbits are there? to launch the satellites tell me so based on distance how many types of satellites are there so orbits yes we have low earth orbit so we have medium earth orbit and we have high earth orbit okay so we have medium earth orbit high earth orbit and low earth orbit so what is the distance between them yes very good anjali so you have to remember even distance so please let me know that distance from the earth surface okay regarding this three orbits and if you are talking about important features of this pslv so pslv we have a four stage engine that means we will be having two solids and two liquid fuels that are filled alternatively and here we have six booster motors strapped on to its first stage to provide higher thrust during the initial flight movements so what are the strap on boosters for example this is rocket here so you will be seeing like this right so these are nothing but this strap on boosters is it clear So here I got one comment, Swarnam Bal. Good morning, ma'am. I am from Tamil Nadu. I am following your classes for past two years. With your video help, I got clear T N P S C. T N P S C selected as V A O. Now preparing for Group One, ma'am. Thank you so much. Yes, heartily congratulations to uh, to you, Swarnam Bal. So thank you so much for your support. So please wish her congratulations.
good morning dilkash okay so this is about the strap on boosters and if you see the different types here so isro has five types of pslv rockets so in this five types we have standard core alone okay so in these two types we do not have any strap on motors and we have excel dl and ql and as of now we use this excel variant is it clear so what is the difference between these variant here is because of use of strap on boosters and even depend upon the weight of the satellites to be orbited so we have this different types of vehicles or different types in this pslv okay is it clear so this is about this topic and now let us move on to next topic so before that i want to give you one practice question so the polar satellite launch vehicle is isro's work horse rocket elaborate so the question that i asked in yesterday's lecture so many of you didn't do the work right so here there is a question so question here is the polar satellite launch vehicle is isro's work horse rocket elaborate so i have to elaborate on this statement why this pslv is called as work horse so you can write about what is this pslv introduction in body you have to write about achievements of this pslv and finally you can say in conclusion yes because of this above achievements because of the consistent launching of satellites pslv is called as work horse of isro is it clear did you get the structure of answer yes or no yes or no tell me fast how many of you are going to write answer word limit you can write within 150 words Okay. All the best, Nitu, Sukanya, Pallavi, Jayshri, Mahesh. Okay, Meenakshi. Very good. So, shall we move on to next topic? So, this is about your first page, and you can move on to city page, but there is nothing much important in the city page. and in this states page also most of the articles are political articles so no need to bother about this political articles at all because upsc or any other state service examinations so they will be not going to ask any question regarding the politics so here you can see one interesting article it is about operation gaja operation gaja shines spotlight on chittur's kumkis So here you have to know about what is this Operation Gaja. So it is to decrease human-animal conflict. Okay. So here you have to think about what are the reasons. What are the reasons for human-animal conflict? And you have to think about how can we address. issue of jumbos that is issue of elephants so tell me what are the reasons for this human animal conflict Yes, very good. Habitat loss. So, because of deforestation, habitat loss is happening, and habitat fragmentation because of developmental projects. Next, yes, infrastructure projects. Next. Yes, next changing in cropping pattern. Very good point. 
because of changing in cropping pattern next agriculture expansion scarcity of water ecological imbalances pollution insufficient food and water yes because of lack of knowledge on biodiversity in search of wood they are coming outside yes very good so there are number of reasons because of this now we can see human animal conflict so let me know so how you are going to address those issues how can you address those issues so what can be the measures what can be the measures yes very good kavya that is afforestation next so we have to go for proper implementation of laws proper implementation of acts next we can also come up with setting up of committees to identify exactly what are the issues to identify issues and possible way out next is avoid forest land from infrastructure projects that means we can go for environment impact assessment before giving the clearances to the project yes we have to make proper availability of food and water inside their habitats so we have to go for cropping patterns change yes we can create more protective areas very good point gokul very good yes we can come up with ecological balance policy very good happy so i will try ramesh so humans should decrease their activities so that they should not come in contact with this wild animals yes very good abiram so we can build eco bridges very good surya i avoid electricity electricity shocks very good improve awareness why animals are coming out of their habitats among the people yes very good so in this way you have to think in multi dimensional manner and you have to write a good answer okay yes this is about this topic and if you move on here you can see one important image that is can you say this image here so which type of ships they are so which type of ships they are so have you ever seen those ships anywhere yes tell me i am waiting yes they are snake boats so can you tell me another name for this snake boats another name yes vallam kali next they are also called as paleodams paleodams or snake boats they are very famous for this nehru trophy snake boat event okay so where this race is conducted in which lake in kerala in which lake in kerala Yes, during Onam festival, very good. But in which lake? Yes, very good, Aditya. It is Vemmanan Lake. So Kerala is very, very much famous for backwaters. So these backwaters in Kerala are called as. in geography there is one term so what is that term backwaters in kerala are called as
Kyles, very good, very good. I got answer from Kritika and Neetu. They are called as Kyles. So Kyles are nothing but backwaters. So these backwaters are very famous for rice cultivation, for this type of boat racing, etc. Is it clear? Any doubts? Anyone? Yeah, let us move on. The next important topic here is the report reveals dip in production of rice food crops in Kerala. So how many of you are from Kerala? Because I need to get answer from you students. Good morning Vinay. So how many of you are from Kerala? Aditya, Neetu, Sudhakar, Odisha, okay. So I'm asking who are from Kerala? Dream big next. Only three students? Yes, I'm waiting, please. Do it fast. Okay, Mohan Krishnan in neighbor of Kerala, Tamil Nadu, okay. Good, one, good morning, Sri Raman. Okay, so here this article says that in Kerala, there is decreased production of rice. So students from Kerala, please answer my question. So what are the reasons? What are the reasons behind the decreasing of production of rice? Yes, tell me. Yes, very good. It is because of less rain. So in this year, monsoon season, we have very less rainfall. And even we studied that in month of August, so we had a very less rainfall. If you are seeing last 100 years. Next. Because of climate change and because of delay in monsoon, very good. And we can see there is water deficit. Scarcity of water, El Nino effect, unseasonal rainfalls, shortage of labor. Yes, very good. So these are the main reasons that contributed for the decreased production of rice. So what is the way forward? Because rice is very important to ensure food security. And even government under this PDS system, that is public distribution system, Government is providing subsidized food grains for the people who are coming under BPL, that is below poverty line. So if there is less production means how it is going to impact food security of our country. So what can be the measures taken? Yes, tell me. Yes, because of less supportive policies from the state government also. Yes, that also led. Yes, so if you see the measures, so what are the possible measures? So first one here is, government can come up with policies to support farmers and we can use technology for better forecasting of weather. Next, any more ideas like measures? Okay, Vishweshwar Rao. Government can provide subsidy. So government can provide incentives for the farmers who are going for this rice cultivation. And government can provide proper irrigation facilities. Okay, next, government need to ensure minimum support price. So whenever there is any disaster like thing, government need to provide incidents under this 
प्रधानमंत्री फसल बीमा योजना सो दिस आर द मेजर्स दैट यू कैन राइट इज इट क्लियर आर यू गेटिंग पॉइंट्स लाइक हाउ टू कनेक्ट द डॉट्स Yes, tell me. Have you started thinking? Good morning, Shivani. Yes, we can also empower youth to engage in farming practices because one more important reason why there is decreased production of rice here is so Kerala is one state in our country which is getting lot of remittances. That means we can see there is out migration is very high in this Kerala. so because of this also traditional farming is uh, decreased and that led to decreased production in of rice in kerala is it right good morning shivani okay is it clear are you getting the points tell me fast Yes, we can go for implementing of soil health cards scheme. Yes, especially the present generation is not at all interested in doing farming now. Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bima Yojana to provide insurance. Is it okay, Kavi? Good morning, Malikarjuna. Okay, so let us move on. so let us classify page it is not at all useful unless and until you are searching for matches yes in this page you can see one article it is says parliament special session will not have question haver so here you have to focus on this question haver so do you know about this question haver have you ever heard about this word question haver So what is this question have a no happy so have you done your parliament chapter yes how many types of questions will be asked so how many types of questions yes very good sudhakar three types so what are they is yes, the first hour of the session is question hour very good is three types what are they yes thank you sampath start question and start question and last one third type Yes, first hour of uh, sitting in Parliament, we have question hour. Okay, so many of you know about this question hour, right? Yes, let us see this article regarding the Kerala food production. So it gave just data here. So area under paddy and production which had fell in year twenty twenty one to twenty twenty two. and if you are compare with the previous year so there is a lot of uh, fall in the production of this rice is seen in kerala so here they give the data like so from 1 lakh around 96000 hectares to it decreased to it decreased like 4.5 percentage and even there is decreasing of production of rice from around 5 lakh 63000 to 6 uh, 63,000 from this 6 lakhs 27,000 tons. That means the production decreased by 10.3 percentage, and there is decreased land under cultivation is by 4.54 percentage. So one more important reason here is so they are moving towards uh, coconut production. So coconut production is increased, and they are not going for cultivation of even uh, plantations like banana plantations, etc. Okay, so this is about this topic. and next one it is about question hour so this article says that the special session of parliament and it is going to conduct from september 18 to september 
it will be not having question hover so because of this this is in use and here you have to focus on what is this question hover because there is a high chance of getting question in your prelims and in your mains regarding this question hover okay so question hour means nothing but the first hour of every parliamentarian sitting okay for every sitting of parliament so initially one hour which is given for this asking of questions so it will be okay one hour but what happened recently in 2014 question hour was shifted in rajya sabha from 11 am to 12 noon so this is one reason current affairs and during this one hour members of parliament they will ask question to ministers and because of this question hour so we are making legislative accountable okay and even if you see the regulation of this question hour it is regulated according to parliamentary rules and the presiding officers of the both the houses like rajya sabha and lok sabha they are the final authority with respect to conduct of question hour so who is the authority which is responsible that is the presiding officers so so this will be the important prelims question so you have to make a note yes very good kritika and vinay and if you see the kinds of questions you ask in this hour so we have normally three types of questions so first one is start question second one is unstarted and third one is short notice question so start question is nothing but so they will be giving the question and they will be having the star mark there okay so in this star mark questions so if so and so member mp who is asking a question to a minister means so he have to give answer in oral format so whenever he is giving answer in oral format supplementary questions may also follow is it clear yes speaker and chairman very good kavya and sudhaka and second type of question is unstarted means there will be no star so for that such type of questions so near minister they will be giving written answer so whenever he is giving written answer so there will be no supplementary questions and third type of questions here is short notice questions it is that is asked by giving a notice of less than 10 days and it is answered orally so here start questions and this pub short notice questions they have to be answered orally so this types of questions very very important from your prelims point of view okay is it clear is it clear or are you following and if you see the frequency question hour in the both the houses which will be held on all days of the session but there are two exceptions so any guess on which days there will be no question hour okay very good very good yes tell me on which days there will be no question hour so there are two days which are exempted so which are those any idea yes budget so on the day finance minister presents the budget very good kritika okay so i got one answer so first one here is when president addresses mps from the both the houses so in this presidential address there is no question have and when our finance minister presents budget in the house so on those two days so there is no question have so this will be very important from your plans is it clear okay let us move on so here you can see one article that is three fourths of india's irrigation sources run on electricity say study so as you all know that india's economy is primarily depend upon agriculture so will you agree or not so india's economy is depend upon agriculture 
So it is called as primary sector which comes in agriculture and here we can say so our GDP is based on agriculture normally because agriculture contributes a lot. And here the issue is so most of the agriculture in India it is depend upon rain. So because of this it is called as rain fed agriculture in India. So but this article says that because of providing of electricity. So in some states, state government, they are providing free electricity. So because of this now people, they tend to use two wells and bore wells. And in this recent years, there is very high increased usage of bore wells and tube wells. So what will be the impacts of excessive usage of of excessive usage of bore wells and tube wells. Yes, tell me what are the impacts first. Yes, there is decrease in the groundwater level. That means I can say there will be decreasing of water table, right? Next, groundwater level is decreasing, decreasing of water table. Yes, affect soil fertility. That will lead to the formation of saline soils due to over exploitation of water resources. So even further it will lead to affecting of production of food and it will have negative impacts on food security. Is it clear? So now let us see this topic in detail. So what are the important things which are said in this article? We are going to see that. So if there is any data you are getting, so try to make that data in your data book. Yes, cause the soil erosion. Water pollution sometimes, yes. Soil fertility will be decreased, yes. Yes, okay, let us move on. So here this article says that recently the latest edition of minor irrigation sensors, that is in short EMIC, minor irrigation centers, it is a compendium of bore wells, tube wells and other privately owned irrigation sources by farmers. And actually this my minor irrigation census they came up with a study okay and this study they said that yes now there is an increased use of tube wells okay it is seen because of increased power supply okay so there is a free supply of electricity by the government and even we are promoting this solar pump solar panels right so because that also that led to the increasing of usage of this tube wells so if you are focusing on data so there is increased use of 56 percentage of this sources okay so 56 percentage they used in 2011 and this 56 percentage which increased to 70 percentage in 2017 so this is one important point and this electrification of groundwater withdrawal corresponds to the rise in the use of tube wells and bore wells so because of providing of power free and even whenever we are promoting the solar wells or solar tube wells like that so they will be also consuming the solar energy and they will be running automatically so that that also led to the increased use right and this one is excessive groundwater withdrawal has been a matter of long standing concern here because what happening we are seeing there will be groundwater exploitation there will be a lot of water will be withdrawn from the ground so that that will lead to the groundwater table decrease right yes very good Vinaya Naga and if you move on it also says that the groundwater situation varies across the country that means in some areas we have good water table level but in some areas we will be having very less groundwater table that means we are not seeing even distribution of groundwater across the country 
and the state government announces the schemes giving farmers incentives for access to the loans to buy such tube wells so because of this there is increased penetration of this tube wells okay is it clear are you following and so that it could be on uh, exploitation that we can see and lower growth in electrification is also likely to be the result of greater emphasis on energy efficient water extraction so here now we have to focus on energy efficiency even in this water extraction because of increased use of tube wells is it clear Yes, tell me. Shall we move on? Okay. And next topic is over half of Sri Lankan people vulnerable, says UNDP. So you have to see what is the Sri Lankan crisis. So what are the problems faced by Sri Lanka? It is facing problem called as inflation. It went into debt trap because of Chinese infrastructure projects. And because of that it also gave Hamman Tota port on lease. Hamban Tota port on lease to China for how many years for 99 years and even there is a food insecurity is seen because of changing of agriculture practices they came up with adoption of organic farming it has not been successful in Sri Lanka and any more issues Yes, poor administration, balance of payment crisis, yes. Balance of payment crisis and political instability. Next, any points? Yes, high import uh, dependency. Next, any more points? And even actually, so this economy of Sri Lanka is mostly depend upon tourism, but because of COVID-19, so this tourism has been one of the worst imp uh, impacted sector. Yes, so these are the some important points that you have to remember regarding this Sri Lankan crisis. So now let us try to see the data which is given by this UNDP report regarding humanitarian crisis. So if you see the context, it says that more than 12 million out of Sri Lanka's 22 million, out of 22 million, 12 million of these people, they are facing challenges. Challenges in which sectors? Challenges in education, health and living standards. Because of economic crisis, which is faced by this, Sri Lanka. Okay, is it clear? And the crushing economic crisis in Sri Lanka last year has left more than half of island population multidimensionally vulnerable. So here, because of this exploitation, because of this economic crisis they are facing, so they are entering into this multidimensional, multidimensionally vulnerable. So this is the thing which said by UNDP survey. So there is a high chance of getting questions regarding this UNDP also regarding your prelims. So you have to know some facts regarding this UNDP. Okay. So here if you see the facts here, United Nations Development Program in short UNDP. So it is United Nations Global Development Network. And UNDP is based on the merging of United Nations Expanded Program of Technical Assistance and even United Nations Special Fund. So this point is very important from your prelims. 
Okay, so because of this economic crisis, even Sri Lanka approached IMF for, to come out of this balance of payment crisis, and India supported this move. Okay, Vinay, is it clear? And UNDP was established in year 1965 by United Nations General Assembly. And one more important thing here is, so what is its work? Its work is to provide advice, training and grant support to developing countries. I have to provide some help to these developing countries. Right? So UNDP executive board is made up of representatives from around 36 countries across the world. So this is also a very important point. And UNDP is central to United Nations Sustainable Development Group. And actually this group, it is a network of around 165 countries. And it unites around 40 United Nations funds, programs, and they will be also coming up with specialized agencies and other bodies which are working. And I want to give you one main question. Can you see the question on the screen? So question here is rehabilitation of human settlements is one of the important environmental impacts which always attracts controversy while planning major projects. So one statement is given that is about rehabilitation of human settlements is important, but it is having controversy. So in this context, you have to discuss the measures. So first one is you have to write about measures suggested for mitigation of this impact while proposing major developmental projects. So you only have to write about what are the measures. Is it clear? How many of you are going to write this answer for this question? Yes, tell me how many of you are going to write answer for this question? Okay, Aditya, Kavya, Abhiram, Naga, Sanatoy, Neetu, Sukanya. Only six or seven students, right? So what happened to the rest? Yes, Mohan, very good. So all the best for the students who are going to write answer, okay? And the next topic here is, here is about what drives the process of Atlantification Arctic Sea. So here you have to focus on one important thing that is, what is this Atlantification? Yes, okay, Dilkush, Kavi, Meenakshi, Ajay, Ravi, Jayashri. Vinay, Anjali, very good. Yes, tell me. So what is the meaning of Atlantification? No idea. Okay, Aditya, very good. Thank you, Harish. Wish you the same. So what is the meaning of Atlantification? Yes, tell me. Is the increasing influence of Atlantic water in the Arctic? Okay. Some, to some extent, we can consider this, Abhiram. Yes, very good, Naga. There is increasing of Atlantic water in Arctic region. So, here, what is going to be the impacts? So, in this Atlantification, it is nothing but there is increasing of Atlantic water in Arctic Ocean. So what is the impact? So what is the impact and what are the impacts? Yes, at least try. So what are the impacts? Naga, tell me. Actually, these Atlantic waters are warmer compared with of this Arctic Ocean, so that that will lead to increased melting of glaciers. So, increased melting will lead to increasing of sea level rise. Is it clear? So, on another side, we can see there is decreasing of availability of ice. So whenever there is decreased availability of ice, we can also see there will be decreased 
availability of fresh water is it clear so far are you following so because of this entire diversity will be affected because here we have certain biodiversity which is adapted to these conditions right so whenever there is increased melting and loss of glaciers that will also impacts the biodiversity which is present in that region yes of course meenakshi it will take some time like 15 to 20 seconds okay so now let us say this topic in detail what author wants to say here so warm waters from atlantic ocean they have been diverted into this arctic ocean the recent years and this phenomenon is called as atlantification so you can get a question in your prelims like recently atlantification is seen in news what it is related to it is related to the diverting of atlantic water towards this arctic ocean is it clear and if you see what is the meaning of this atlantification so the streams of warm water from atlantic ocean flows into the arctic ocean at barents sea so because of this what are the sea ice is there so that will be going to be melting and even there is decreased availability of uh, this ice in this region okay so because of this what happened we can see there will be increase of sea level and it will be having negative impacts on ecology of that area so what are the effects effects will be loosening of ice in arctic region and you can see there is more solar radiation is absorbed by the oceans and because of this we can see it will lead to further global warming and atlantification is also affect in the ocean circulation because we are having different types of oceanic currents like cold oceanic currents warm oceanic currents so because of this atlantification we can also see there will be the impact on this ocean circulation and weather patterns can be changed and arctic ecosystems span the food chain so here there will be also a negative impact on the ecology is it clear yes submergence will happen harish very good so is it clear so far Yes, right. Shall we move on? Now I will be taking not more than like seven to eight minutes to complete this class. Okay. So I want to introduce this course that is daily means answer course that we started in this Tatur Science, and this go this course it is going to be started from September fourth, and here we are covering each and every subject of your GS. which includes gs1 gs2 gs3 and gs4 and there will be essay and case study practice also there on every sunday so how this course it is going like uh, we will be giving you one year schedule so that you have to complete that topic in that week and based on that topic we are going to give you daily one mains question and you are going to write answer for that question if you send back that question then there will be evaluation So after evaluation is done, and we will be resending that corrected answer paper to your mail again, so that you can check the feedback. And we are also going to get the give the model answer also. And apart from that, you will be having live classes for the doubt clearing session, and there will be one to one mentorship will be provided. So here you will be having two to three times of revision of each and every topic of your GS, and it is very very affordable. It is around eight thousand two hundred rupees. and even if you are not uh, able to pay that amount in one go you can pay in two installments so this is absolutely very very beneficial course that i can say and many students they got benefited from this course and if you invest money then your work will be very easy than investing in the time okay so don't waste your time for taking one more attempt so whatever the attempts that you have so you have to utilize very very efficiently and you have to work on where you are weak and mains answer writing skills plays a very important role and it is a deciding factors whether your name will be there in the final list or not so don't take any opportunity so try to join this course okay is it clear 
EMI option is available. You can pay into in to EMIs. So Kanya. Okay, now let's go back to Hindu paper. So I did with this article, and there is an article that is about Pragyan completed task. Rover safely parked and set into sleep mode. Says Isro. So finally, what happened? So what are the work that have to be done by this Pragyan? So that work is done. So this is the thing which mainly said. And we have to see this article in very great detail. So I will be coming up with a separate video regarding this Chandrayaan three. Okay, from history to what happened in the last. Is it clear? And we are also going to discuss about Chandrayaan four also there. And in this page, you can see over half of Sri Lankan people are vulnerable. Says UNDP. I discuss this topic. Correct. And if you move on in the science page, I discussed this topic, which is important regarding Atlantification. So rest of the articles are not much important in our science page today. And in this business page also, there is nothing much important. So these are very important articles that appeared in our today's Hindu newspaper. So if you have doubt, so please let me know. And if you have any doubts, you can text me on eight zero seven four seven six double five one three number on WhatsApp. So that we will be going to discuss your doubts in doubt clearance session that will be conducted on every Monday at seven p.m. Thank you so much, Minakshi. All the best, dear. Yes, Vina, I can understand Telugu. So, if you have any doubts, so please post your doubts after once this session is concluded, or you can WhatsApp me your doubts so that I will be discussing the doubts in doubt clearing session. Okay, any doubts? Okay, so that's all for today, and we are going to meet in the next session. So, if you really like this video, so please hit the like button and try to share this video to your friends also who are in need to improve their knowledge. And this analysis will be useful for both UPSC and as well as other state public service examination. So, thank you so much for attending this session.